tell me something. Would you use this to brush your teeth? Or would you use this to brush your teeth? If you said this, then you'd be correct because this is a toothbrush. Would you use this to make a phone call? Or would you use this to make a phone call? If you said this, then you'd be correct because this is a cell phone. Would you use this to open your door? Or would you use a key to open your door? If you say this, then you'd be correct because this or these are keys. If you got all of those correct, then you do very well at this topic because as you just saw and as you just learned, everything has its various functions and purposes. So let's talk about the books of original entry. Let's go. All right, guys. So welcome to another episode of Everything Business. Um, in this tutorial, I will be talking about the books of original entry, as you would have gleaned by now. All right. So let's get right into it. What do we mean, or what are the books of original entry? So these are the books in which we first record transactions. Right? There are six books of original entry, each having their respective functions and roles. Just like what we, we saw um, in that little demonstration that I did at the beginning, right? every book of original entry has its various functions. So there are six books of original entry. Let's talk about them. We have the purchases journal or the purchases day book. We have the purchases returns journal or the purchases returns day book. We have the sales journal or the sales day book. We have the sales returns journal or the sales returns day book. We have the cash book and then we have the general journal. All right, so these are the six books of original entry. Let's go. So then, ledgers, what are ledgers? Ledgers are the books where the double entry accounts are written, right? There are three types of ledgers, namely the purchases ledger, which is used to record creditors accounts then we have the sales ledger which is used to record debtors accounts and then we have the general ledger which is basically used to record all other um, accounting information such as assets capital liabilities expenses and revenues the thing about the ledger is that it is directly linked to the books of original entry and so we move from the books of original entry um, and then we, 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 we would make corresponding entries in the ledgers so the books of original entry they are linked to the ledgers and that's a very important concept for you to grasp all right so let's talk about the purchases journal or the purchases day book so first and foremost this book is used to record goods bought on credit and I want to pay attention to goods bought right only goods that are bought on credit is recorded in this book the double entry for each transaction is shown in the purchases ledger so this book is linked with the purchases ledger the total on the purchases day book is transferred to the purchases account in the general ledger um, when we buy goods on credit we normally receive a purchases invoice from our suppliers and uh, there are times when we receive discounts but these discounts must not be recorded in the journal please bear that in mind very important so let's look at an example all right so we have two transactions here right the first transaction says november 2 2020 bought goods and credit from s samson for forty three thousand four hundred and fifty dollars and then we have for november 5 for the same year bought goods and credit from d reynolds for nine thousand three hundred dollars now this is how our purchases journal would appear or it would look if you realize we have different rows and columns and the columns have headings so we have the date column obviously for the date we have the column here to record the suppliers names or the names of the suppliers we have the folio column here um, the folio column is to show the cross reference um, between the journal and the ledger so 
in the folio column we would we would learn or we would know um, where we can find S. Samson's account in the ledger in the purchases ledger so here we have PL which stands for purchases ledger and then the page in the purchases ledger right is 8 so this number here the 8 right here it represents the page number in the purchases ledger please bear that in mind and then we have the invoice column right every invoice normally carries a number on it and we call it the invoice number right and it helps with record keeping so the invoice number would go right here all right and you can make up the invoice number for 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 our purposes now practicing we can make up the invoice number so i have zero zero one right here and then the last column is the amount column obviously you put the amount of money right right here all right i want you to look also that at the end of the period right november 30 the purchases journal is balanced off right and you see the word in there it says transfer to purchases account it is in the general ledger gl stands for general ledger and the page number in the general ledger here is one and then you put the total so you add um the four, 43,450 and 9,300 and you get the 52,750 all right then you move on to your ledger so you have your purchases ledger now right remember that the purchases ledger is where you would find your creditors accounts right you would find your double entry account in the purchases ledger so let's look here we have s samson's account I want you to take note of what side of S. Samson's account the information is posted to. Right? It is posted on the credit side of S. Samson's account. All right. The same will, would apply to D. Reynolds account. The information is posted on the credit side. Um, these guys, the, these are creditors or liabilities accounts, right? And to increase a liability account, we would have learned, right, in from pre, from my previous videos. To increase a liability account we would make a credit entry all right but guess what we're still not finished as yet so then we move on to our general ledger in the general ledger now we would show our purchases account right the purchases account is debited in the general ledger as you can see right here right so you have november 30 total credit purchases for the month right it is 52,750 it is the same value or the same figure that is on the purchases journal because remember the purchases journal um, it, it, it records goods bought on credit all right so that's that's the step of how to record um, information in the purchases journal and then we transfer it to the purchases ledger and then we make up the purchases account in the general ledger all right all right then we move on to the purchases returns journal or the returns outward journal because there are times when we buy goods and for some reason the goods are defective and we have to send them back to the suppliers that is what we call purchases returns or previously we call them return returns outwards all right now this book is used to record what goods returned by the business to suppliers obviously right the double entry for each transaction is shown in the purchases ledger the total on the purchases returns daybook is transferred to the returns account in the general ledger. When goods are returned to suppliers, a debit note is sent to suppliers stating the details of the items being returned. Very important. Now let's look at an example. Here again we have two transactions, right? They are similar to the one that we looked at before. November 7, 2020, return goods to S. Samson. 3450 November 8, 2020, return goods to D. Reynolds, $300, right? Now, the, all journals are drawn up the same way. The only difference, I want you to look at this pur um, purchases returns journal. Instead of having invoice number here, we have what? A note number. It would signify uh, 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 the, the, the debit note number, all right? And then we transfer the information to the purchases um, ledger now I deliberately left the information that was in some S Samson's account and D Reynolds account right because I want to show you right that we do not need to draw up these guys accounts again 
because their accounts are already established in the purchases ledger. So now we are going to insert the information on the debit side of the account. So there you have it. November 7, purchases returns and it's on the debit side of S. Samson account to show that there is a reduction in S. Samson's account because we are sending back um, goods to him. So we, we owe him less money, right? And the same would apply for D. Reynolds. The information for our purchases returns would go on the debit side. And then we have our general ledger where we have our purchases returns account um, and then the information is placed on the credit side. Please pay careful attention to this.